Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. On this video I'm going to talk about finding sides using trigonometry. Uh, notice this says part four here. There are other videos uh, in this series of right triangle trigonometry that you might need to watch if you're confused. Uh, you can find them on my website. Uh, but I'm just going to jump into this lesson here. So to find sides using trigonometry, um, there's a couple things you need to know. First of all, for me to find x here, I need to have an angle other than the 90 and I need to have a side length on the triangle. I need to have two things uh, to find the missing side here. Again, the angle other than the 90 and one of the side lengths. Uh, otherwise, you can't use trigonometry. And like if, I look over, if I look over at example two here, notice how I need to find a side. And so I have an angle other than the 90 and another side length. And so I can now find this missing side here using trigonometry. Uh, also, before I jump into any kind of trigonometry problem, I'm a big fan of writing down soa katoa. Uh, and so we have uh, so so ka toa. And if you can't remember, this is sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. This is cosine of an, uh, an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of an angle is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Uh, and so this is going to be helpful in, in solving these problems. And so let's just jump into this. Now, first of all, uh, I'm going to label the hypotenuse here. Again, that's the longest side. It's opposite the 90 degree angle. Now, according to this angle here, x is the opposite side of this triangle. And then the adjacent side is going to be the last side. And from here, it's going to help me figure out if is this a sine problem, a cosine problem, or a tangent problem. And if I look around, the, the uh, hypotenuse has a, a number with it, which is going to be useful. Uh, I need to find x here. So this is O is useful. Uh, but the adjacent has nothing next to it to help me find the missing side. So in essence, I can ignore the adjacent side here. And if I look up here, I need to find which trig trigonometric function has both an h and an o in it. And that leads me to sine. Uh, again, I can't use anything with an adjacent side in there. And so the cosine and tangent are, are useless to me right now. And so let's write down the trigonometric function using sine. Sine of the angle is the uh, opposite side over the hypotenuse. Uh, and then I know the angle in here. I'm going to plug in what I know from this triangle and this problem. So the angle is 20 degrees. The opposite side is x. And the hypotenuse is 37. And so my goal is to find x. But how do you do that? Well, I show my students uh, a way using proportions. And then I think that helps ease them into the concept of what we're doing. And so if I want to make this a proportion, I can divide this by 1. And then you should be familiar with proportions where you would cross multiply and you'd solve for x. And that's what I'm going to do here. So if I multiply sine 20 times 37, I'm going to put 37 in front. And then sine 20 is going to go second. And then we have 1 times x, which just reduces down to x. And then since x is by itself, I can find x now. Now, you might be uh, wondering, why in the world did I put 37 in front? That's just what you want to do. That's how I was taught how to do it, and, and that's just how I show my students how to do it. Uh, so the side length needs to go in front. And then the trigonometric function and with the angle needs to go second. This is always how you want to do this. Uh, and then notice, again, x is by itself. So I can, uh, sorry about that, I can take my calculator. Let me move it over real quick. And I can type in 37 times sine 20, and that will get me the missing side. And now my problem says to round to the nearest tenth. Uh, from what I understand, most sides, whenever you're finding sides, you're always going to round to the nearest tenth, which is one decimal spot. So this is 12.7. And so I have x is equal to 12.7. And then I'm done with the problem here. Uh, I'm going to show you a shortcut to this problem uh, in a moment after I finish this problem here. Uh, but uh, let me solve example two first. And so we're just going to do the same thing we just did here. But we're actually, there's going to be a, a little bit different uh, kind of scenario here. And so it's worthwhile to watch. And so let's label the hypotenuse. And then opposite the 75 degrees is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. Again, the hypotenuse is what we're solving for. Uh, the adjacent side has a 9, which is going to be useful here. The opposite side doesn't have anything of value here, so I'm going to ignore the opposite side. And so I'm going to ignore anything that has an opposite side in here. And so that guy's useless. Um, sine has an O in it. That's useless. But the A and the H, that's going to be cosine. So I'm going to write down the trigonometric function for cosine. Cosine of the angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Uh, 
and I'm just going to plug in what I know. Well, what do I know here? I know the angle is 75 degrees. I know the adjacent side is 9, and I know the hypotenuse is x, and that's what I'm solving for. Uh, again, I'm going to make this a proportion, just like I did on the previous one, by dividing by 1, and then I'm going to cross multiply, but you're going to see a subtle difference here. x times cosine 75 x in front, cosine 75 goes in second, equals 1 times 9, well that's just 9, and is x by itself now? No. This one has an additional step. I've got to cancel out the cosine 75 before I can get x by itself, or sorry, in, in order to get x by itself. And to do that, I'm going to divide the left side by cosine 75, and if I divide the left side by cosine 75, I've got to divide the right side by cosine 75. Uh, and then now you might be a little confused with what's happening here. So let me spend a little bit of time explaining why I'm doing this. You need to understand that if I type in cosine 75 into a calculator, it gets me a decimal. It gets me a number. And so cosine 75 is just a number. If I had 5x equals 10, what would I do to get x by itself? Well, I would just divide by 5. And that's the same idea that's going to happen here. Cosine 75 is just a number. It's this long decimal here, and instead of writing down this long decimal, we're just going to write down cosine 75. So cosine 75 is just a number. And if I divide a number by itself, it cancels out. And so I have x is equal to 9 divided by cosine 75. x is by itself, so I'm not, I can now solve for x. And so I can plug this into my calculator. 9 divided by cosine 75. And this is to the nearest tenth is 34.8. So x is equal to 34.8. And I want to double check I did that right. So give me one moment here. And so I have uh, 9 divided by cosine 75. Yes, this is correct. And so um, let me, let me uh, go over what's, what went on here. Uh, I divided in this problem. Whenever x is on the bottom, you're going to end up dividing. Whenever is x is on top, you're going to end up multiplying. And there's a simple phrase uh, that I tell my students to help remember that. If x is up high, you're going to multiply. Notice uh, x uh, was up high here, and when all we did is we ended up multiplying these two numbers, and we had x by itself. Uh, but on example two, if I focus on the original problem we had from here down to here, what happened with the cosine 75 and the x? Well, the x and the cosine actually end up swapping places. So cosine 75 swapped where the x was, and the x went where the cosine 75 is. And so if x is down low, you switch O which is, is a silly thing, but I know. So if you, x is up high, you multiply. If x is down low, you switch O. Uh, that's how white people uh, make up words in Spanish. They just add an O to it, right? Uh, being silly, of course. So if x is up high, you multiply. x is down low, you switch O. And so if you remember x is down low, you switch O, you would skip a step here, and then that would get you x by itself. Uh, but it doesn't really save you much time here, but if you remember x is up high, you multiply, then it might help you remember how to solve this problem. This is all you really need to know on this video, but I'm going to solve two more example problems like this, and you're going to see that they go very quickly. They don't take very long to do. This took a long time because I explained it. So let me do two more problems, and if you want to watch them, you can. If not, that's fine. But let's uh, just jump into these right here. So I'm going to write down Sokotoa again, so so Ka, sorry, my, my pen's not working right now. So, ka, toa. And so let's label what we have here. Um, we have hypotenuse. We have, man, my pen, uh, we have opposite. And we have the adjacent side. And so H is useless to me right now because there's no information here, but the O and the A is useful. That's going to lead me to, to the toa or tangent of opposite over adjacent. So tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. And I'm going to plug in what I know here. And so tangent 37, opposite is x, adjacent is 8. And if x is up high, you multiply. So x is going to be 8 tangent 37. And this will give me my answer. And so that was pretty quick, wasn't it? And so let me type in 
um, 8 times tangent uh, 37. And that gets me to the nearest tenth, gets me basically 6. So x is 6 or 6.0, whatever makes you happy here. And so um, six, six. So that took me very little time. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, example four here. Uh, we have a hypotenuse. Uh, opposite the 46 degree angle is going to be the opposite side. We have adjacent here. And so the adjacent's not giving me any bit of uh, information here. So O and H leads me to sine. So let's write down sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. And then the angle in this case is 46. Opposite is 21 over x. Uh, if x is down low, you switch O. So x is now our sine 46 is. And we have 21 on top. And then the sine 46 moves down to the bottom here. Uh, and so uh, x is now by itself. And so if I plug this into my calculator here, Sorry about that. So we have 21 uh, divided by sine 46 uh, rounded to the nearest tenth. Uh, that's 29.2. So x is 29.2. And so again, if, if x is up high, you multiply. If x is down low, you switch O. If x is up high, you multiply. If x is down low, you're going to end up dividing. And hopefully this helps you understand how to find sides using trigonometry. Have a very good day. Bye-bye.